Thank you for, for inviting me. I appreciate the invitation. And your first question really spoke to me. You know, how do you self-define? And it's true that I come from many worlds, you know, from deep within an Orthodox tradition of Kabbalah, of Hebrew law, deep within a mystical tradition rooted originally in Kabbalah, which is Hebrew mysticism, but later expanding to the great interior mystical traditions of all the, the great traditions. At the same time, there's a part of me that lives in scholarship. I did my doctorate at Oxford University, where you wrote your doctorate in the pub, you know, and self-understand as an intellectual historian, understanding, trying to outline and see the trajectory of the history of ideas. At the same time, in, in another part of my life, I'm privileged to be a spiritual teacher and to work with my students and a, a teacher of enlightenment, to transmit, to share enlightenment teaching. And in another part of my being, and, and in essence, these are of course all one, I'm a lover, I love people. And to be a lover, to love people, to participate in love, to be love, right? to live as love in the world. And all of this comes together for me in what perhaps I would call as a kind of self-understanding, a kind of searching for a kind of self-definition, even though the self can't be defined. I'm an evolutionary mystic. And if I had to try and share with you what I teach my students, which means what I'm working with myself, it would be evolutionary mysticism. And at the core of evolutionary mysticism is the understanding that eternity itself is evolving. Essence itself is unfolding and that we participate in, we are the engine of that evolution. We are the engine of that unfolding. And that unfolding is essential because it's unfolding to higher and higher levels of complexity, but the interior face of complexity, right? Higher and higher levels of complexity. You begin with evolution, subatomic particles, you know, to atoms, to early molecules, to more complex molecules, right? To cells, single cellular organisms, then to multicellular organisms, then to early plants, then to later plants, you know, to early animals, mammals, later mammals, ultimately to the triune brain, the three-part brain of the human being, which itself has rapidly increased in size and depth over the last, the last period of evolution. So there's an evolution of complexity, but that's just the exterior structure. On the inside, there's an evolution of consciousness, of consciousness itself is evolving to higher and higher levels of knowing, of awareness, of understanding. Until in the last 150 years, consciousness is waking up to itself, is becoming aware of itself. We're becoming self-conscious. We're aware that we're conscious. And, and we begin to therefore consciously participate in evolution. Evolution moves from being a blind drive through biological evolution and then through cultural evolution to conscious evolution, where we're, we awake to our own evolution, to our own ability to participate in the evolution of consciousness. And the evolution of consciousness at its core is no less than the evolution of love. Sat Chit Ananda, being consciousness, Ananda, love, the interior of Chit, of a consciousness, is love itself. So to be an evolutionary mystic is to have the lived experience, the lived realization, to actually feel it, to know it as a true gnosis, as a true knowing at the very cellular level of your being that you are responsible for the all, that you live for the sake of the all, that you are responsible, privileged to, delighted to participate in the evolution of consciousness which is the evolution of love. And an evolutionary mystic 
is in some sense different than a householder. Not better, but different. The primary commitment of the evolutionary mystic isn't the normal concerns, the beautiful concerns of the householder. The primary concern and commitment and passionate creative love that drives the evolutionary mystic in every moment is to participate, to contribute to the very source code of consciousness in a way that we can evolve to higher levels of, of being, of being with each other, that we can learn to create a we space, which is rooted right in a love that transforms. We can begin to create the technologies of, of evolutionary we space and emergent collective intelligence that are so essential to confront the very real challenges that, that threaten our very existence on the planet. But even more than that, we're pulled, much like the creative software engineer is pulled to develop new applications, right? We're, we're pulled, we're compelled, we're driven by the cosmos to develop greater and greater forms of loving each other, of affirming each other's dignity, of seeing each other, of receiving each other, of being in communion together. So that, that's what it means to be an evolutionary mystic. And it means, furthermore, that in every generation, there's a particular evolution of eternity that, that needs to happen. There's a particular unfolding. There's a new revelation that if we can clarify ourselves, if we can transcend ego, meaning to end the trance of the ego grasping that seeks to make itself comfortable in order to persuade itself that it won't die. If we can find our interior space and rest in being, then we can begin to emerge towards a new becoming and identify and participate and unlock the unique mystery of consciousness, of consciousness's evolution, of the evolution of consciousness, which is the evolution of love, right? That, that lives in that moment, that lives in that generation, that needs to unfold in order to to move us forward, right, towards the vision of what, of the possible human, of what we might be, of what we desperately need to be, of what we desire with all of our being to be. And so in our first conversation today, I want to talk about, from the perspective of an evolutionary mystic, what's up? What are the new set of emergent insights and understandings that can actually evolve love evolve consciousness at this moment in time.